Thank you. you. May be seated. And uh, Brother Ben, can you see about the prayer sheets back there? We got those until uh, oh, Brother Josh has got them there. Brother Ben, you can get some of them from him and help with the other side, maybe. And if you need off, uh, if you need offering envelope, if you need a prayer sheet, hold your hand up, and uh, these guys will get one to you. We want to be mindful to pray for Miss Crystal um, Barker's family and um, the loss of her mom. And that service is going to be uh, tomorrow. Um, one o'clock our time in Michigan. Let me give you the deal where you can watch it if you'd like to. Some of you remember Ms. Osborne, and uh, she went to jail with us, and real, real sweet lady, and um, 99 years old. So let me give you this here real quick if I can find it. Um, let's see here. Uh, yeah, it's, if you go, uh, the YouTube YouTube address is G R A W N B M C. If any of you would like to tune into that, and uh, it'll start at one o'clock our time, and that is uh, again uh, YouTube address is G R A W N B M C, and it pulls up Drawn Bible Methodist Church there in Michigan. So anyway, uh, you can watch that funeral service tomorrow. It's amazing what all you can do nowadays, amen, if you know how to do it. And uh, Anyway, have your prayer sheets there. You can kind of look down there, and we've been mindful to pray, uh, continue to pray for Brother Billy Kirsch with his uh, back, and, and I think about the middle of September, third week in September, he'll be having uh, major back surgery, and I know he appreciates all the prayers on his behalf. Continue to pray for Miss Nada Corley, and that God will be with her. Uh, Mildred Farr is still under hospice care. And uh, just pray for all the families who've lost loved ones, and there's been a number of those. And um, pray that God would, would uh, be with them and comfort them. And our brother Paul Davis is a preacher friend of ours up in uh, Bryant, Arkansas, and his mom passed away, and he has her funeral tomorrow. And he asked if we would pray. He's got a number of cousins and so forth coming in from Texas and other places that are lost, and, and they need the Lord. So please pray that God would open their hearts up and... and uh, uh, you know, speak to their hearts. And then uh, Floyd Folsom is a preacher friend of ours in Mena, Arkansas, and uh, his wife Peggy uh, has been sick, real sick, and so she needs our prayers that, that God would be with her. And um, then a preacher friend of ours in um, Monroe, Louisiana, had a lady that was lost, and he had called or texted me last yesterday and asked if we would pray for her salvation. And, and um, anyway, I talked to him today, and and uh, she was watching like a, a video of the plan of salvation last night, and she did watch the whole thing. And so just pray that the Holy Spirit would take that and, and work on her heart, okay? And that would be a real blessing uh, there as well. And so uh, does somebody else have a, uh, a, a prayer request tonight, Miss, Miss Lisa? All right, all right, so pray for Mary Halstetter, that God would be with her, and, uh, okay, 
Somebody else with a prayer request, Brother Bob? Okay. All right. A praise and a good first day of school. Amen. That's a blessing. And we've got a good group of students this year. It's always exciting and a lot of energy, a lot of energy. Those little kids have a lot of energy. Somebody say amen right there. And uh, I was in Walmart yesterday, and, and uh, one of the little girls that was coming to our school, she was in a buggy, and uh, she was like kindergarten or whatever. And um, one of the little um, Plunkett girls, and uh, what's her name? Not, not Lily, but uh, Birdie. Birdie. Yeah, so her name's Birdie. And so I'm pushing down the aisle, and she's coming the other way, and she's, her grandma's pushing her, and, and, and she says, hey. And I said, hey. And she said, I'm going to school tomorrow. I said, you are? I said, that's awesome, you know. And Well, then I went down one deal, and I passed them again, and she hollered at me and said, hey. And I said, what? And she said, I'm going to school tomorrow. And her grandma's like, she's told everybody in Walmart three times, you know. <laughs> and so she was so excited about coming to school today. And I thought, wow, I never was that excited about coming to school. <laughs> I mean, man, like when the bus rounded the corner, I was running and hiding in the bushes, amen, and get out, getting out of Dodge, amen. I didn't want to go to school. But uh, this little boy walked by today, and and, um, and he, uh, he he's got in a line, you know, there's like 11 in Miss Lydia's class, something like that, and he's a little, little, little boy. He, he passed me, and he said, where's my mama? <laughs> it's his first day at school. I said, she's going to be here this afternoon to get you your plane. So anyway, man, he seemed like that was all he needed. He just wanted to know where his mama was. <laughs> and that would have been exactly where I was at, too. Where's my mama? <laughs> Lord, help me get my mama. All right. But praise the Lord for the little ones. Yes, ma'am, Miss Jane. Jane? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we do. Yeah, we do need to pray. There are a lot of different people around that we know and love that, you know, that Brother Bob's son, Aaron, uh, he's just getting over it, and we thank the Lord that he's kind of made it through it because he was having a hard time. I always call and check on him, and, you know, when somebody you call, you call them and they don't answer, you know, that's a, you know they're sick. When My nephew's too sick to talk to me. Uh, he's, he's pretty sick, so anyway, I'm glad they're doing better. But do pray for those in, uh, that, that have it and deal with all that. Hank? Amen. That's a blessing. Papa started talking today. Amen. He's... He's been down for a while now, and uh, he's there in Ruston in the rehab, and and uh, they're weaning him off the sedation and all that stuff, and he talked today. Isn't that a blessing? Yeah. I think he hasn't talked since like June 29th or something like that. It's been a while, so anyway, we're glad that he's talking today and responding, and that's Ronnie Hanson, so that's some of y'all know Ronnie, so anyway, uh, praise the Lord for that. That's a, that's a big praise for their family, I know. All right. Um, anybody else? How many have an unspoken request, someone or some situation, okay? All right, we want to pray for our revival coming up, and, and I've been talking to Brother Dallas, and he's all excited, and he led somebody to the Lord here recently. I think this past Sunday he had a, a man that came and walked the aisle. He was 60 years old, and his son came, and they both got saved and baptized, and anyway, he was picking them up for church tonight, you know, and he's just all excited. about not that a blessing? And uh, he, his preacher was with him, and he was excited about that, just the whole thing, and so... Brother Dallas, what he's doing now, um, you know, of course, most of you all know that he had problems with addiction and so on. He usually flies out on Saturday and goes Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and then he flies back home, drives home Wednesday night, you know, home Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and, and teaches in their Bible college on Friday, has an addictions program on Friday night at the church, and then he turns around and goes back out the next week. And Nikita, his wife, who used to travel with him all the time, she's over the, um, over the food at the Bible College there, they have a Bible College at Brother Fugate's Church, have about 160 students. So she's the lady that's over all the kitchen, and she has Bible College girls that help her cook, and, and but she coordinates all the food. So you can imagine feeding a couple hundred people seven days a week. I mean, that's a lot of responsibility for her. So anyway, uh, they're both real happy and, and serving the Lord. Amen. So I'm excited about that. But you pray for them that God will be with them. And then I talked to Brother Coral. Uh, this week, and he's coming in, and, and uh, so anyway, we're just excited about the meeting coming in, and uh, preachers coming in to be a blessing, and all of that. So anyway, uh, I have no doubt they'll preach, but we want to prepare our hearts to be ready to receive what the Lord has for us. Okay, it's just as much our responsibility to pre prepare as it is their responsibility to prepare. Okay, and uh, I remember one time, Brother Parker, you know, uh, or somebody was asking me, you know. Um, would you rather have a steak or a hamburger? And I said, well, I'd, I'd rather have a steak myself. I'd say amen right there. 
And uh, so, but if you're full, if you're already full, like, and you don't even want nothing, you don't want no steak because you're full. So, you know, I want to come to church during a revival and I want to be empty. I want to empty myself of me and be ready to receive, you know, to take in what the Lord has for me. But if I'm already full, you know, brim full, then can't put nothing else in there, you know, because I'm already full. So let's empty our cups a little bit and let the Lord fill us, you know, fill my cup, Lord. I lift it up and let him do the filling and all of that, okay? All right. Well, that's a blessing. And uh, let's see here. Yeah, just pray for all the different ones that, that have lost loved ones recently that God would comfort their hearts. And um, the deaf girl, uh, I'm trying to think what her name is. I'm drawing a blank. I know her sister's name is Jennifer. And uh, uh, anyway, I know her name. I married her and Claude. And uh, But anyway, she's a greeter at Walmart. And uh, anyway, uh, I was trying to see if I could pull her name up. But... Um, I can't think of it, but she um, she texts me, and um, when I go into Walmart, she does that. That's a sign for I love you, and so uh, I went like that. You know, I love you, and, of course, then she starts getting on her phone, and, and she rolled her car the other day and because uh, she wanted to show me the pictures of the, of the accident, and then she borrowed her dad's car after she wrecked that car and had a truck ran into her on the, on the second time three days later, and so she's just overwhelmed with all that, you know, and so, uh, you know, I just told her that I was sorry and that, you know, we loved her and praying for her and all that. And so, yeah, yeah, well, it's a silver tooth. Uh, I don't know what her first name is. You think it's Tiffany? Yeah, I know Jennifer Biddle is her sister. And, uh, but anyway, yeah, she, that's who, that's, it's, she's a silver tooth that's deaf. And they're all, a bunch of them are deaf. But anyway, yeah. So anyway, you pray for her who's overwhelmed by that. But, um. Uh, I'm glad you're here tonight, and uh, let's let's bow our heads and we'll pray and ask the Lord to uh, to bless these requests tonight. Brother Dalton Smith, come up and pray for us. Brother Dalton, this is last Wednesday night, so we're going to get him to pray. He preached chapel today in a Christian school, so we're just trying to work him, you know, on the way out. And uh, and anyway, we're going to have a little fellowship Sunday night, and um, Brother Dalton has graciously yielded to Brother Dallas. He's going to go ahead and let Brother Dallas preach Sunday <laughs> night, but uh, we're going to have... Uh, <laughs> we're going to have, <laughs> that was a bad joke. Yeah, yeah. Um, no, we're going to have uh, a fellowship, finger food fellowship Sunday night, and, and several people kind of asked me, are we going to do something for him? You know, and Dalton's been a blessing since he came back from Bible college, and I, I told him today we had lunch together, and I told him, I said, you know, when you came back from Bible college, you really encouraged me yeah. just in the area of soul winning and Brother Dalton's, you know, just sometimes just, you know, I mean, there's a synergy when, you know, you get two donkeys, you you know, pulling, you can pull a lot more. And, I mean, we all pulling together, but we can do a lot more when we're pulling together. You know what I'm saying? He came in and kind of brought some energy with him, no doubt, and in a lot of different areas. And so uh, he's already kind of feeling like he's going to miss us. And and uh, today he was signing Bibles and signing shoes and signing all kinds of things today and uh, on the way out of chapel. And, and anyway, uh, but... Uh, be sure and let him know that. But Sunday night, we'll uh, we'll kind of do a little something for him. And he's going on staff in Longview and going to be teaching in the Christian school there and a bunch of other things. So uh, one day, Brother Dalton feels like uh, he's going to pastor one day, long term, you know, and I, I could see him doing that. And so you pray for him, okay? And we're certainly going to miss him. But he's going to miss us too. And uh, there's no doubt about that. The reality of him being over that way and not being here is going to hit him. Uh, because there's one of him, you know, we're going to miss him a lot, but he's going to miss us a lot too, so it's going to be a mutual missing, okay? So anyway, if you want to do something for him Sunday night, I know we got the revival and all that, but I'm sure any, any little tokens of, of cookies or anything you want to, he likes cookies, don't you? He loves cookies, okay. Any little old whatever you want to do for him would be just right, amen. Just let him know we love him on the, on the, I'll say on the way out. He'll be back, but you know what I'm talking about. All right, but don't pray for us. My taste buds love cookies, but my stomach not so much. Amen. And uh, but I don't feel the love though yet from Brother Terry. Brother Terry said <clears throat> he said tonight he was going to give me a black eye. I was like, well, I appreciate that, Brother Terry. And uh, he's like, you know, before I leave, I'm going to get a black eye. So this is great. No, but I love y'all, and uh, I appreciate everything, obviously. And uh, I will miss everybody. So that's for sure. But let's pray, Lord. Thank you for um, the, tonight. Thank you for allowing us to come to your house once again, God. I pray that you'll be with all these requests that are made known. I know there's very. Um, 
there are some situations that are hard for people. There are some situations that uh, they're going through that maybe they don't understand, but God, at the end of the day, it didn't surprise you. And God, I know that um, there's some sickness and some um, going on that people don't understand. Like I said, they don't understand, but I pray that you give them comfort. And I, I pray that you'll heal them and, Lord, um, help them to get back to 100% you know, soon. And I pray that you be with the families that have lost loved ones. And I, God, I ask that you just comfort them as well. And, Lord, as they uh, we have the funerals coming up, and uh, I know that, that that can be a hard time in people's lives. But I ask that you, you just, like I said, you just be with them and put your arms around them. I, I pray that you'll be with our missionaries that we support around um, these walls here. And, you know, even the ones we don't support, Lord, the ones that are, uh, you know, that have the gospel and they're giving it out. And I pray that uh, you, you continue to bless each and every one of them, give them safety. And, uh, Lord, I, I also think about the, the different Christians and Americans that are in Afghanistan right now. Um, I know that, uh, you know, we're, that, that's a big ordeal, and I pray that you'll keep, give safety to each and every uh, person over there that's in harm's way, um, God, with the, the, the terrorists and everything going on. I pray that you'll just, you uh, do it, any, any Christians or Americans that are there, I pray that you'll give them safety and them to get out uh, back, back to the, uh, our, you know, our, the states and just help them, Lord. They need you, and um, give them, like I said, give them comfort as well, and Lord, give them wisdom and and what to do, and I pray that you'll you'll help our, our military to to give them give them the the, the resources and within and what they need to get them out. Lord, pray for them. I pray that you'll be with the services tonight. Help us to have an open heart, like Brother Jay said. And be, I pray that you'll be with Brother Dallas as he's getting ready to come in as well. Lord, I know that he's always ready to go, but I pray that you'll just give him, um, you know, some, just continue to, to fill him with your spirit and uh, give him power as he preaches and help us as christians here in the pew lord to be ready for what you have to say because it's not at the end of the day if, if we don't allow you to work in our hearts you won't if we don't if we don't give you that liberty to do something in our lives then you won't lord it's up to us to say you know what god we want to be filled uh, we want we want you to feed us you know the word of god we want the word of god in our hearts and we want we want you to speak to us in this service i pray that you'll be with uh the preaching tonight as well we love you christ and i pray amen amen, amen. yeah we'll put a basket out Brother Dalton, amen, if somebody wants to do something for him financially. If we could get him $5, we could at least get him down to Junction City, amen. Get him down to the state line, then he's on his own after that, amen. <laughs> yeah, that was a joke, y'all. Okay. All right. Um, let me read a couple prayer letters to you. Uh, Brother um, John Narag is a missionary to the Philippines, and uh, he and his wife, um, I think her name's Annie, and uh, we sponsored them to go to camp a few years ago, and, and uh, he'd gone to Bible college there in Longview, and, and we just wanted to be a blessing to him. And um, anyway, uh, let me read some of this. Uh, we are, are thankful to be able to update you once again. These last two months have been uh, eventful, challenging, uplifting, and even frustrating. You know you're in the center of God's will when you have these experiences simultaneously on the mission field. In June, as uh, restrictions began to be lifted, we enjoyed salvation testimonies on Sunday evenings from particular church members. Hearing how God saved their souls was always a blessing. We also had our first ever prayer breakfast for the men of the church for the weekend of Father's Day. July is a month which uh, had a, a mixed bag of emotions. On July 2nd, the Cal Volcano had another eruption. We prepared our things for evacuation. Praise the Lord, we did not have to as uh, there was an eruption, but not as huge as the one in January of 2020. It is calm since the middle of July, and the alert status has been downgraded. The following Sunday, to celebrate July 4th, we had a patriotic Sunday for our church. We didn't have it uh, to teach our people how to be, uh, we didn't have to uh, have it to teach our people how to be American, but to have that patriotic attitude when it comes to all the liberties God has allowed us to have. The last week of July, I saw our young people <coughs> attend a virtual youth conference. Please pray that they keep all their decisions. Our family is doing well. Um, Bella has been busy with the boys. Uh, that's her name, Bella. And uh, they're sure are, uh, they sure are growing up fast. Uh, Blaze started walking in July. He is keeping his mom even busier now, getting into all the stuff in the kitchen. Jeriel is dying to get out and about, while Bowen is showing signs of middle child syndrome. Children five years old and above are finally allowed, allowed to go out and about toward the end of July, but after a couple days, the country retracted as of a writing of this update, have started uh, up heavy lockdowns once again due to the Delta variant of COVID. So winning story is the lockdowns have been eased a bit these last two months and allowed us to see more people out and about again. On a particular Saturday, alone 
on one of the highways, uh, along one of the highways, we found ourselves uh, talking to a young man named Marfrin at a fruit stand. Uh, he must have been having a bad day. When he accepted Christ into his heart, he was not having a bad day anymore. Amen. He even smiled. We continued to follow up on him as he got a new job recently and his new schedule would allow him to come to church. And anyway, I appreciate uh, the NARAGs and their blessing. He's a good soul winner and a good man, and we appreciate their fruit there uh, in the Philippines, okay? Exciting news today. We're flying back to Honduras, and this is Leslie Pridey and Alba. Praise the Lord. Alba and I will be returning to Honduras. We leave DFW, uh, Dallas-Fort Worth, at 1 Texas time and arrive there three and a half hours later. My parents will pick us up and take us the remaining two hours to Singu Tepeque. Something like that. S I G U A T E P E Q U E. How do we say that one? The doctor said that the surgery three weeks ago today went well, and that our next appointment in September will uh, will do a video visit. We'll come back to Texas September 29th for our next appointment. Her prescribed pills uh, take uh, take the place of the maintenance infusions. Please continue to pray for her complete healing and that God will give her strength as we travel today. Your, hope, yours with hope for Honduras, Leslie Pridey. And so we appreciate the Prideys. Um, let's see here. Baki Samputh Kumar has been in the home for eight years, and this is one of the children's homes. Uh, Brother Neff started the Lighthouse Children's Ministry. They have homes in for children in Costa Rica, India, Mexico, Panama, Thailand, and the Philippines. And uh, one of our preacher friends, I've been over to his place in India, Matthew Henry wrote this. Uh, Baki, he had uh, been in the home for eight years, arrived when he was in the fourth grade. He finished high school in May of 2020 and is now finishing his first year of a two-year course in uh, Industrial Training Institute studying electricity. However, do the coronavirus, the final exam, was postponed, which he must take to proceed further. Kindly pray for him in this matter. Baki has been saved and was baptized April 21st, 19, uh, 2019. Uh, he learned how to operate the church PA system and serves the Lord in this capacity. The remaining children are all doing fine. All the schools are closed <clears throat> due to the second wave, and uh, final exams were postponed in our state. Most other states in India have canceled the exam and promoted all the students to the next class. Therefore, we are waiting for an announcement concerning the status of exams in our state, especially the 10th graders who are prepared to graduate from high school. Pray for all our children. I wish they would have went to 10th grade when I was in school, amen. We had to go, I had to go 13 years, amen, uh, counting kindergarten, of course. Y'all thought I failed, didn't you? <laughs> no. All right. Brother Lee, let's sing one more, one more song, okay? Let's stand together. And uh, I think, are we singing another one of our little courses there? We're going to try one. 412, 412. <laughs> Others see Jesus in you. Thank you. you. May be seated, and we'll have the ushers come forward. That was a great song, wasn't it? I don't know if we did very good singing it, but the, it's a good question, isn't it? Can others see Jesus in you? And uh, I know they could see the devil in us before we got saved. <coughs> Amen. I'd like them to be able to see Jesus in, in me now and see Jesus in you. That'd be a blessing. Amen. If you need an offering envelope, these fellows will get one to you. And this is the next generation of ushers, so you can tell we're in trouble. So please pray. Better fast on this one. Put this on the list tomorrow of the ushers of the next generation. 
Yes. No, I'm proud of these guys. Isn't it a blessing? I appreciate all of our young people, our boys and girls. We love them. We're proud of them. I'm glad we have young people that love the Lord. Amen. And there's a lot of churches you go to, and, man, the young people are just so cold and indifferent, kind of like just in their own little world or whatever. And I know we've got some like that that are in their own little world. But, um, man, I thank the Lord they have a desire for Jesus. Amen. That means a lot. And uh, to see young people that love the Lord. And uh, what a blessing to get saved at an early age and serve God your whole life. And that's the best testimony. That is the best testimony. Amen. It sure is. All right, Brother Caleb, won't you come over here and pray for us? Brother Caleb's over here looking kind of distinguished and everything. So come on over here. Amen. All right, let's pray. Father, Lord, thank you, Lord, for this day. Thank you, Lord, for everything you've done for us and everything you've given us. Thank you, Lord, for our great pastor. And just uh, please help us to uh, have open minds and open hearts to what he has to say during the sermon, Lord. And we'll thank you, Lord, for it. Lord, we pray. Amen. Praise the Lord. Uh, I'm glad you're here tonight. I don't know if, uh, how many of y'all are here. Uh, Brother Josh up here, uh, he read in the letter that Tony Hudson, or not Tony Hudson, that Brother Chris Dallas was preaching tonight. So he came to hear Brother Dallas preach tonight. And Kayla said, you got to get ready. Brother, Brother, Brother Dallas is preaching tonight. And so he had surgery on had corporal tunnel surgery. And so he limped in, you know, and, and only to find Brother J.D. Amen. So... My name is Chris Dallas, and I've been in rehab six times. And no, not really. I guess. All right. Take your Bibles. Turn to Proverbs chapter fourteen. I did that for Brother Josh. All right. Proverbs chapter fourteen. Last Wednesday night we went through uh, verses one through four. And uh, tonight we're going to start and go verses 5 through 10, 5 through 10. And so we're going to just pick right up on it in verse number 5. The Bible says, a faithful witness will not lie. A faithful witness will not lie. And I, I would just say to everybody in here, young and old alike, is be honest. Be honest. Man, my dad, he pounded that in us. If he caught us lying, man, he would give us double. He just did not tolerate lying. And I appreciate that about my dad. He just wanted us to be honest. Because, you know, it's kind of foolishness is bound in the heart of a child. And kids will lie to you, try to keep from getting in trouble. And uh, parents, we got to make sure that we kind of, you know, make sure that they're being honest with us, okay? And a faithful witness tells the truth, okay? And Martin Luther, he witnessed the truth of justification by faith. He witnessed to the truth of justification by faith when he figured that out. Uh, Billy Sunday spoke the truth about the evils of liquor. John Huss spoke the truth about the sufficiency of the scriptures. The Apostle John witnessed for Jesus Christ on the Isle of Patmos. The Apostle Paul witnessed uh, in the Philippian jail, amen. I mean, he spoke up for Jesus in the jail. And Stephen witnessed to the, tr the truth of the Old Testament before the council, and then they took him out and stoned him. But I'm going to tell you something. A faithful witness uh, will not teach the theory of evolution. We did not come from monkeys. I mean, there's I mean, so many facts to the Genesis account of creation. I, I just believe the Bible, amen. And it just if it hair lips everybody else, I'm just going with the Lord, amen. And a faithful witness will, will, will not teach a work salvation. The Bible teaches salvation by grace through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is a gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Again, a faithful witness 
will not lie. Look at the rest of the verse. says, but a false witness will utter lies. A false witness is committed to the declaration of that which is untrue, okay? And people will just look at you and just lie through their teeth. I mean, just bald-faced liars. I mean, just look you in the eyeball and just lie to you, you know? I'm thinking, what in the world, you know? And again, a false witness, uh, it brings bondage because of the deceit and the lies and the curse. And um, Take your Bibles and hold on to Proverbs here. We're coming right back here to Proverbs 14. But turn back to 1 Peter chapter number 1. 1 Peter chapter number 1. And... Um, 1 Peter chapter number 1. Remember the fellowship Sunday night for Brother Dalton. Do not forget that. Do not forget to bring finger foods or something to eat. It's late notice, but anyway, we're going to go for it. 1 Peter chapter 2. Look at verse number 1. 1 Peter 2, 1. The Bible says, Wherefore, laying aside all malice and all guile, and hypocrisies and envies and all evil speakings. All evil speakings. And again, uh, a false witness will utter lies. Look at First Peter chapter 2 and look at verse down at verse number 21. First Peter 2.21, the Bible says, For even hereunto were ye called, because Christ also suffered for us, leaving us an example that you should follow his steps. Look at verse 22 now. Who did no sin, neither was guile found in his mouth. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. A false witness will utter lies. They speak guile. I mean, they just lie through their teeth. And Jesus said, hey, you don't do that. And Jesus didn't do that. There was no sin in him, neither was guile found in his mouth. And he's our example, okay? He's our example. Now turn back to Matthew chapter 26. Matthew chapter 26. Matthew chapter 26, and look down at verse number 59. Matthew 26 and verse 59, and Peter's following afar off there in verse number 58. Verse 59 says, uh, Matthew 26, 59, now the chief priest and the elders and all the council sought false witness against Jesus to put him to death, but found none. Yea, though many false witnesses came, yet found they none. At the last came two false witnesses. As a kangaroo court, Jesus never did anything wrong. He was sinless. He was perfect, okay, without God, without sin. And... Uh, you know, they found false witness, somebody that would lie about the Lord Jesus Christ. Isn't that sad that somebody would lie about the Lord and say things about him that were not true? Turn back to 1 Kings chapter number 21. 1 Kings chapter number 21. Again, just another Bible illustration of people just lying through their teeth. And, and you know this story too, 1 Kings chapter number 21. It's the story of Naboth's vineyard and Ahab wants Naboth's vineyard and and uh, give me thy vineyard. But uh, Naboth said in verse number 3, uh, Naboth said to Ahab, The Lord forbid it me that I should give the inheritance of my fathers unto thee. And, and uh, verse 4, the end of the verse, he says, I will not give thee the inheritance of my fathers. And uh, verse number 6, again, uh, give me thy vineyard for money, or else if it please thee, I will give thee another venue and, uh, vineyard. And he said, I will not give thee my vineyard. And so he goes home having a pity party and whining and, and, and all that to Jezebel. And she, she comes up with this, this deceitful plan to have, uh, to have Naboth killed. Look at verse number 10. And set two men, sons of Belial, before him to bear witness against him, saying, Thou didst blaspheme God and the king, and then carry him out and stone him that he may die. Hey, he didn't blaspheme God and he didn't blaspheme the king. What did they do? They just lied on him. They lied about it. They got two people to agree and lie against Naboth. Are y'all listening to me? What is that? It's a lying tongue. That's a deceitful tongue. That's a false witness uttering lies. And God said, you don't do that. A faithful witness will not lie. There's social lies and political lies and military lies and commercial lies and religious lies. It's lying going on everywhere, isn't there? Yep. Somebody said... 
a, a lie will travel two miles while the truth is putting his boots on. Man, those lies, they spread so fast on people, and a lie is a lie. My dad used to say, honesty, son, honesty is not the best policy. Honesty is the only policy. That's a good little statement. Honesty is not the best policy. Honesty is the only policy. And you, I found this to be true that in people hiring, like personnel directors, you can't even find people nowadays that can pass a drug test. But, you know, if you be honest and be dependable, I mean, you don't have to be even the greatest worker. There may be people that work that can't come to work because they're strung out on drugs. But, you know, if you'll, if you'll work hard and, and be honest and be dependable, you know, you take care of your job and your job will take care of you. It sure will. And, and yet people want to lie and, and be deceitful and, and all that stuff. They mess things up. Look at verse number 6 now. We're back in Proverbs very quickly. Proverbs chapter 14, verse number 6. A scorner seeketh, a scorner seeketh wisdom and findeth it not. But knowledge is easy unto him that under, uh, understandeth. And again, a scorner is, is disqualified from possessing wisdom. Why? His heart is filled with pride. And, and, and again, uh, only those whom God gives wisdom, amen. I mean, I, there's the world's wisdom, man's wisdom, but I, I, I want God's wisdom. And he said, hey, if you lack wisdom, you, know, you ask of me, and I'll give you wisdom, and I want God's wisdom, okay? But God's the one who does the choosing on who he gives his wisdom to, okay, who possesses his wisdom. And so the fool will not find God's wisdom because he scorns it. But knowledge, the Bible says, is easy unto, unto him that understandeth. So the wise, on, on the contrast from the foolish, the wise find it easy because he respects and, and he knows the value of God's wisdom. And wisdom comes by the fear of the Lord, okay? And, and again, uh, 1 Corinthians 2.11, the Bible says this, For what man knoweth the things of a man, save the spirit of a man which is in him, even so the things of God knoweth no man but the spirit of God. And I'm glad, hey, the lost people, they don't even have a clue uh, because the Spirit of God, you know, they don't have the Spirit of God working in them like you and I do as God's children. And that's why they don't understand where we're coming from. And we know where they're coming from because that's where we came from. But I'm glad I'm on the winning side now. Look now at verse number 7. Go from the presence of a foolish man when thou perceivest not in him the lips of knowledge. So when you perceive that a man's heart has been captured by foolishness, young people, please listen to me. You get away from that person quickly. When they're being an idiot and they're doing things that you know are not right, as God's child, you get away from that person, okay? Because you're going to get in over your head. You're going to get in big trouble, okay? And, and the proper course of action, the Bible says, withdraw from the company of one whose mouth is filled with foolishness, okay? I like what Psalms 1 says. Uh, it's our school uh, memory verse for this month, the chapter, uh, Psalms 1, 1 through 6, those six verses there. But it says, Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly. So God doesn't want you even walking with the, the counsel of the ungodly. He don't want you hanging out with foolish people, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. He don't want you walking with them, standing with them, sitting with them. He don't want you hanging out with those that are foolish, okay? Withdraw thyself. You get away from them as fast as you can. Separation from evil and folly is necessary and profitable, okay? And, and acting foolishly with confidence. There's a lot of foolish idiots and they get in trouble. But that doesn't change their foolishness to wisdom, okay? Just because they're bold about it, okay? And you're not going to increase knowledge if you hang out with fools, okay? So stay away from that crowd. That's not my crowd. It's, that shouldn't be your crowd as God's child, okay? And uh, if you fall off the wagon, uh, you're going to get, you know, if you've been out of trouble and you want to stay out of trouble, you better stay away from that crowd because if you get back with that wrong crowd, you're going to get back in trouble. Right. Say, so, well, how do you know that? Because I opened a letter today. Uh, from someone who got out of jail and now they're back in jail. If you're a felon, there's things you can't do as a felon. If you get stopped and you got stuff in your vehicle, you're going back to jail. Back to jail. It's hard, y'all. It's hard for me. I mean, you know, I love these people, you know, and they work their way into my heart, but, and I can't bail everybody out. You know, I mean, I wish I could, but I just can't, you know, and, and all that. But you pray, amen, just pray. I mean, they need the Lord, and they need to get back to the Lord. But, man, you just hate that when you, you kind of see what's going to happen when, you know, they come and do well for a while, and then they fall off the wagon, and you don't see them. And the next thing you know, they're, they're riding you from, from prison, riding you from some other state wanting help. It's really sad. It's what sin does. It's what foolishness does and hanging out with fools does. 
Look at verse number uh, 8. The wisdom of the prudent is to understand his way, but the folly of fools is deceit. So the prudent person, uh, you know, the wisdom of the prudent is to understand his way, so the prudent person is guided by wisdom, okay, into the way that's right, okay, and there's always going to be a right way and there's always going to be a wrong way, and uh, again, the prudent person, uh, it, it, he tries to understand the issues of life and wisdom, and he looks ahead to see, you know, be able to plan better, and, and uh, again, to understand what he's doing and, and where he's going and how he's behaving himself and what the end results are going to be. That's, that's being prudent, okay, but the folly of the fool's is deceit, okay? And again, this thing just that, that ruins the fool is their deceit. They're just so deceitful. And fools demonstrate their foolishness by a lack of integrity. They're very devious and, and all of that. They deceive themselves about the future, okay? So again, uh, the folly of fools is that their perception of, of, of their walk is no way lines up with the Lord, okay? They're on a different road. And man, I don't want to hang out with those kind of people, and I don't want you to hang out with those kind of people. Verse number 9. Look at this one now. The Bible says fools make a mock at sin. Fools make a mock at sin. But among the righteous there's favor. So fools, they think, they think sin is funny. They make light of sin. No big deal. They blow it off. They mock the seriousness of sin. They laugh and joke about things that, you know, about sin. And our society is full of that, man. Just things that, you know, the entertainment world, they laugh at sin. And, and, and the world says, you know, sin now, repent later. Oh, yeah, that's stupid, isn't it? Yeah. I, I was reading something the other day. I was driving down. It said, come, uh, come to the whatever church, the zoo church, uh, in, in your underwear. That was in Village, Arkansas, way up there in the mountains. I was thinking, man, these church signs are getting stupid. How disrespectful is that to God? I don't go anywhere. I go to the bathroom in my underwear. I don't go to church in my underwear. Amen. That is crazy, man. I think you ought to wear your Sunday best to church. Amen? I'm thinking, good night. This must be a nudist colony up here or something. What in the world? Sow your wild oats now. That's what the world says. Sow your wild oats now. Ha, ha, ha. I read the story about four young men. They piled into a taxi which already carried, carried an aged gentleman. An old gentleman was already in the taxi, and they sped, down, uh, sped, sped, sped toward downtown New York City. The young men laughed and roared about what they were going to do that, with the night, the drinks, the women, when they got there. And one of them winked at his buddy, and he turned to the old man who had been silently gazing out the window of the, of the taxi, and he said, How about it, Pop? Want to make a night on the town with us? The old gentleman gentleman quietly looked at each one of the young bucks in turn and then said slowly and deliberately, gentlemen, I fear God. Huh. Oh yeah, I'm giving boys something to think about. I fear God. Say that with me. I fear God. Say it again. I fear God. You know, the Bible says the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. And, and their fools make a mock of sin. And uh, I fear God, man. I don't want God to have to get a hold of me, amen. So I'm going to try to do right as best I can. Wow. But among the righteous, there's favor. Among the righteous, there's favor. The wise person realizes the seriousness of sin, and, and he gains favor from God. And the righteous develop a solid reputation. Just do right, and God will bless it because God blesses right, and he blesses righteousness. Verse number 10 tonight, and we'll be done. And uh, it says, The heart of his own bitterness, the heart knoweth his own bitterness, and a stranger doth not intermeddle with his joy. The heart knoweth his own bitterness. You know, uh, we all are different. And we all have all kinds of different experiences in our lives. We're unique. We're, we're individuals. And, uh, you know, we don't always, and I, I don't always evaluate things. I had a lady say to me the other day, she said, Preacher, you remember that Sunday you, you was just checking on me and I just started crying? And I said, 
you know, I do remember that, and I, I didn't know what was wrong with her, you know, and, and, uh, and she was just kind of sharing her heart a long time later that something was wrong that day. It wasn't anything I said or anything that I did, but she just some things that she was dealing with in life, and she just, you know, it just kind of popped out, and she started crying, and I was okay. I just kind of backed off. I could just tell something was up, and I didn't, didn't pry or whatever and just didn't want to go there. But, but anyway, you know, Hannah in the Bible, Hannah, uh, she knew the, the great sorrow of her bitterness, of, uh, her, of being barren. She couldn't have children. You remember that story in the Bible when she prayed and, 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 and asked God that, you know, if he would give her a little man child, she would give him back to the Lord. And, and Eli, you know, uh, Eli, the priest, he thought she was drunk. And she wasn't drunk. You remember that? Eli was kind of unsympathetic and just kind of like, you know, you, you, you've been drinking. I mean, why are you acting? You know, I mean, she, he just thought she was drunk, and she wasn't drunk. She was of a sorrowful spirit. She was hurting on the inside. And, and Eli uh, just did, didn't, you know, didn't. He kind of rebuked her, but he didn't know what her heart. He didn't know what was going on on the inside of her. And so I'm just saying that the heart knoweth his own bitterness. And sometimes people got things going on inside of their heart that, you might not even have a clue, okay? We might often be misunderstood or, or misjudged because people can't read what's going on in our heart. And But I'm glad as a child of God, please listen to me, as a child of God, I'm glad that we have a constant companion. I'm glad we have somebody who shares our burdens, amen, and bear you one another burdens and so fulfill the law of Christ. But I'm glad that the Holy Spirit of God, you know, Jesus lives inside my heart. What a blessing, okay? And... Uh, you know, a Christian, when we're handed a lemon in life, you know, we can make lemonade out of it. Amen? When we're handed a lemon in life, we can make lemonade out of it. I got some lemon water right here. Yeah, made some lemonade. Tastes pretty good. I like lemonade. How many of y'all like lemonade? Yeah. How many of y'all have ever given a baby a, a piece of lemon and watched them make faces? How many of y'all have done that? It's cruel, but it's funny, isn't it, the little faces they make? And uh, shame on y'all. I've done it too, though. I'll expect to see all of us at the altar tonight. <laughs> Two prisoners at night behind prison bars. One saw mud and the other saw stars. Kind of depends on where you're at in life, you know, how you look at things. Thank God there's a friend that sticketh closer than a brother. What a blessing. And no one else on earth is around to share our pain, to share our burdens and our despair. And I'm glad that Jesus is there. The agony, the loneliness, the betrayal, the bereavement, the hunger, all these things. I'm glad we have a counselor. We have a companion who knows all about our bitterness. The stranger doth not intermeddle with his joy. So every heart has its own joys and every heart has its own bitterness that no one else can share, that no one else can maybe understand, no one but Jesus. We're told to weep with those who weep and rejoice with those who rejoice in Romans 12, 15. Hebrews 13, 3 says, Remember them that are in bonds as bound with them, and them which suffer adversity as being yourself also in the body. I'm glad Jesus, the Bible says in Colossians 1.27, Christ in you, Christ in you, the hope of glory. He understands because he's in us. He understands our burdens and he understands where we're at because he's in us. I'm glad that he's in me tonight. What a blessing. What a blessing. A stranger doth not intermeddle with his joy. Some joy can be, uh, cannot be known by others. Let me give you this little list of joy and we'll be done. You know, the lost people in the world, they can't know the joy of being a Christian. You know, they can't. They don't know the joy that you and I know. They don't know the joy. Lost people cannot know the joys of uh, the joy of sin forgiven. I remember I led a lady to the Lord one time, and, and she, you know, I don't know how much ladies weigh, but if I was guessing, um, I would say she probably weighed about 120 pounds. And she said to me, she said, after she prayed and asked Jesus in her heart, she said, it feels like a 500-pound load has been lifted. And she's just talking about that load of sin. Well, sin will weight you down, won't it? Yeah, it sure will. But for a lost person, they don't even know the joy of, of having your sin forgiven. 
They don't know the joy of sin conquered. You know, if you've got an addiction problem, God can help you conquer your addiction. He can. God can help you do that. God can help you do that. God wants to help you do that. He can give you victory. The joy of sin conquered. I always get Brother Dallas to give his testimony. He's been here so many times I feel bad asking him to give his testimony, but I always just enjoy hearing how God helped him with his addiction program, his addiction. And now he started an addictions program in his church, and he's helping every Friday night a lot of addicts get victory over their, their addictions because he's been helped. The joy of sin conquered. The joy of restored relationship with God. The joy of a restored relationship with God. Man, if you backslide, man, you need to get back to Jesus ASAP as soon as possible. You need to get back to the Lord and restore David said that when he messed with, up with Bathsheba and had his little fling with her. He said, restore unto me the joy of thy salvation. Man, he lost his joy. The joy of accepted service. Man, I'll tell you, you just give a cup of cool water in the Lord's name. Man, there's just joy in serving Jesus. The happiest days of any person's life are the days that they're serving the Lord. The joy of answered prayer. Man, what a blessing to pray and, and see God answer your prayers as a child of God. Man, there's a joy in that. There is a joy in that, man. I'll tell you, to see an answered prayer, to get a good report. And when you've been praying for a situation, that is a blessing. I mean, you know what I'm talking about on that one, answered prayer. Isn't that a joy? It's just a blessing. It makes you want to pray more, more effectively, more efficiently. The joy of usefulness for God. Man, we want to be used by God. we got preacher friends that are... That are talking about their exit strategy. I, I'm thinking, man, I don't even know what an exit strategy is. I just want to serve Jesus. I mean, I may not always be able to do what I'm doing, but I don't have an exit strategy. I mean, the Lord called me into the ministry, and he, you know, when He's done with me, uh, He can let me know, Amen, that He's done with me. But uh, I'm just, man, I'm I'm enjoying serving the Lord. I really am. God's blessing and, and all that stuff, and man, the, the joy of usefulness for God. By the way, you better better let him use you while you're able to because there may come a time when you're not able to be used uh, as like you are maybe right now and all that stuff. So, But I think we can always, always be used in the service of the Lord uh, to some capacity. And then uh, number seven, the joy of peace in trouble, in times of trouble. Joy of peace in times of trouble. When the storm is raging and Jesus says, peace be still. Seven things there, the joy of sin forgiven, the joy of sin conquered, the joy... The joy of restored relationship with God, the joy of accepted service, the joy of answered prayer, the joy of usefulness for God, the joy of peace in time of trouble, and then the highest joy of all, and that's the joy of just fellowship and commun communion with God. Huh. Yeah, I like that one. Yeah. Galen, come up here and help me. I love old Galen. Galen is a good guinea pig. You know, they use... It, guinea pigs for experimental purposes they do they really do they use them as test cases rats and things like that guinea pig sounds better than a rat but um, man it's just good that, that Galen's saved by the grace of God I told Galen today I said man I, I said Galen you look like a preacher he had his shirt and tie on his Wednesday you know and he was telling his brother Josh gave him that shirt and tie let's walk a little bit Galen and so me and old Galen, we was just talking today, and I said, Galen, you look like a preacher. He looked at me, he's like, man, thank you, Brother J.D. He did, he said, thank you, Brother J.D. What were we doing? We was just communing. We was just talking. You want to be close to God? You got to commune with him. You got to talk to him a little bit. Man, we can go a long time in our Christian life, and we ain't talking to him. You know, I don't want to be, I don't want to do the Lord like that. I want to be close to him, man. I mean, man, he died for me, and I love him, and he's a friend that sticketh closer than a brother, and I want to reciprocate that, you know, that friendship, and I want him to just know that, man, me and him's buddies, and I love the Lord. With all my heart, I love him. And he walks with me, and he talks with me. Wow, he walks with me and talks with me. Man, I deserve hell. I deserve hell, but he loved me. He loved me. He loves you. 
I talked to him today, and my cares all fell away. Oh, yeah, you can cast your cares on him. He cares for you. Yeah, and he ain't going anywhere. He said, I'll never leave thee, and I'll never forsake thee. And we may throw him under the bus, and we may leave him, but he ain't leaving us. Why? Because he loves us. I want to encourage you, man. There's a joy. There's a joy unspeakable and full of glory in just staying in close to him. Thank you, Jalen. You look like a preacher. He just grinning like a possum. Old preacher told me that one time, and his name was Pat Powell. And Pat Powell, he was from Oklahoma, but he was a fighter pilot in World War II. He looked like a bulldog. And that's what he told me. He said, Brother Weedo, he said, you look like a preacher. He said, I've always looked like a fighter pilot. And he was a preacher. <laughs> but he did. He looked like a bulldog. He just had that, you know, just, he was just, and, and he said, you just look, and boy, that just encouraged my heart. And I thought about that today, and I was just encouraging Galen. You look like a preacher. It's a blessing. God, you're a blessing. Let's bow our heads tonight. Thank you all for listening. Joy. 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 Father, we love you tonight. We sure do. Thank you, Lord, for the word of God. Lord, thank you for the instruction, the wisdom that we can glean and gain. And Lord, help us now to take the word of God and apply it to our hearts. Bless the message to our hearts, Lord. And maybe some here tonight have lost their joy, Lord. And God, I pray that they would realize, Lord, they can have that joy, Lord, from you. And Lord, uh, thank you for being there with us and for us during those difficult times in our lives. Lord, we sure do love you now. We need you. Bless the invitation. Bless our revival coming up. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's stand together and we'll uh, have a verse of invitation. Miss Crystal's playing. If you need to come tonight, bow your knee and heart before the Lord. Be a good time to prepare your heart. Begin to prepare your heart for a revival coming up. And, and uh, God will get a hold of us and stir us. And what a blessing to be tender before the Lord. not revive us again the old preacher said you got to be vibe before you can be revived I'm glad I've been vibe but every once in a while I just need to be revived amen I do I need to be revived it's a new beginning of obedience sometimes they they have this spray. They call it renews it. And you spray that renews it on your furniture and it renews it. It makes it new again. And uh, might need to run through here sometimes and kind of renew some of y'all. And uh, remember when you first got saved, how excited you was? Man says there, restore unto me the joy of thy salvation. We can't lose our salvation, but we can lose our joy. Man, I love serving God. I love serving the Lord. It's not something I have to do. It's something I get to. I love serving Jesus. I do. I love it. And love to see people get saved. Love to see missionaries supported. I love missionaries. And it's a blessing. It's a life. All this in heaven too. What a blessing. All right. Brother Dalton, come up and dismiss us tonight. You got one more prayer in you? We're trying to work him really good tonight. Amen. How many of y'all think he's got two prayers in him? Raise your hand right there. Amen. He better have more than that. Amen. He's going into the ministry full time. Amen. All right. So we're going to let him dismiss us tonight. And uh, amen. Pray for our revival on Sunday. That'll be good too. Two prayers. I mean, I need to pray for about five or ten minutes here, or is that? Oh, okay. Everybody else, they'll stay standing. Uh, <laughs>
<laughs> Let's pray. Lord, thank you so much for the message from uh, the book of Proverbs there. Lord, we love you, and thank you so much for that. And Brother J.D. just bringing the message straight. And um, God, I know that it's, it's easy for sometimes it's, hard, it's easy for us to get around the wrong kind of influences, Lord, and especially as young people. But I feel that you help the young people here and every, anyone that maybe they have some friends that they know they're not lead, they're not they're not helping them get closer to you, but maybe they're you know drawing you further away, or they're drawing them further away from you. But I pray that you be with them on that. And then, Lord, also. Um, um, think about the, you know, uh, fools make a mock at sin. Lord, help us to realize, you know, say sin's, a, sin's not something we should play around with or just make fun of. Lord, it's something we should take very seriously and just try to live a holy life unto you and a pure life that um, is pleasing to you, God, as best as, we, as best as we can. We'll never be perfect, Lord, but we sure can uh, try our best as Christians to please you in everything that we do. I thank you for our pastor. Keep everybody safe as they go home. Once again, breathe with the revival this coming weekend and next week. And I pray that you'll give the preachers, I give Brother Dallas and Brother Coral, give them your power. Uh, once again, take everybody, everybody's safety tonight and bring us back on Sunday. And we love you. Christ, I'm afraid. Amen.